Are you a Mac user and have an iPhone? Are you wondering how the Photos app really works? I mean, Apple's supposed to be this great company to manage your family pictures. Well, don't worry, you're not alone if you have questions on how to make photos work for you. In this video, I'm gonna give you a quick overview and some tips on how to make the most of organizing and preserving your family pictures for today, 10 years from now, and generations to come. Hi, I'm Molly Bartelt, co-founder of Pixology, and we are photo estate planners trying to help people figure out saving their pictures. And the digital side of it is tough. So this video is on the Photos app that is on the Mac and on iPhone. I'm gonna cover a few things on organizing pictures in the Photos app and show you a couple tricks on how to change dates and add keywords so that you can find the pictures you're looking for when you want them. All right, let's dive in to my Photos app on my computer. All right, we are in the Photos app and I am in... Okay, we're in my Photos app on my MacBook Pro. On the left-hand panel is kind of your navigation bar to get to different places where your photos are or different ways to view your pictures. With the top option photos, we can look at all photos, years, months, and days. At the bottom, I can see I have 19,821 photos and almost 350 videos. Now, I have my photos app synced to iCloud so that my phone photos are the same. Let me show you how that works. In the uh, menu bar at the top, Photos, you wanna click on Preferences. And I have iCloud visible and it's checked, iCloud Photos. It means it automatically uploads and stores all my pictures and videos in iCloud so I can access them anywhere from devices and even on the web. I also have checked Optimize Mac Storage because my MacBook Pro laptop has a smaller hard drive and I would fill up my hard drive with pictures and videos and not be able to do much else. So that's important. And you also wanna check for it on your phone and you can do that in the settings and the Photos app. So let me show you what that looks like. So here we are in my Photos app. I actually need to go to my settings and scroll down to photos. Did I pass it? There it is. And you can see that I have iCloud Photos on and I'm also optimizing my iPhone storage. This is how my computer and phone have synced photos. What's on one is on the other. And keep in mind, the full original files are up in iCloud, and I'm looking at the thumbnails on either device. When I need a full original, I can quickly download it. So here we are back in the Photos app, and let's take a look down the left-hand side. These are different ways that you can look at your pictures. And under the library section here, we have the photos. This is where you can see all photos, years, months, and days. You can click on memories and photos tries to give you like a sampling of memories from different days. I actually don't find this useful, but um, it's available there. If you need to have like a random moment looking through memories, you can spend some time there. Then there's favorites. Anytime that you're in a picture that you love, you're gonna wanna add the heart to it. So let me just click on this picture and the heart is the favorite. Up in the right hand corner, you can see the heart is selected. Now I'm not clicking on it because then it would remove my photo from my favorites view. So if that's 
got a black heart with a hollow inside and not colored, it means you haven't favorited it yet. So favorites is kind of fun to look at and, and it makes it easy to find those best pictures that you want to see quickly. The people view is how the Photos app does facial recognition and it's powerful. You can click on any one of these names and I have entered some in and photos will give you more suggestions. So you can spend a lot of time here if you like. And incidentally, you know, organizing by people is, um, is useful. However, it's nice when it's done automatically like this because organizing in folders and albums kind of can get putsy. So organizationally, these views, you have the photos, you can look at them in years, months, or days, and by people, I feel like are the most useful. And that all happens automatically. The Photos app is working on that behind the scenes for you. The places and recents, not so important. Imports can be helpful because it will show you the pictures you've imported recently. So if you know a date that you brought a picture in, you can uh, grow, scroll to that area and, and look for the picture. It could be helpful. And then recently deleted, this is useful if you need to recover a picture. Now you only have 30 days, maybe a few more, it just depends. But uh, if it's in the deleted uh, folder here, the trash can, and, and you're not sure you meant to delete it, get it out as quick as possible. Then there's a shared section. These are albums that have been shared with you. In the shared view, you have activity, which would be what you've done recently, and then you have shared albums. Now look at this little triangle. When you click on that, you'll expand the list and you'll see what's inside it. So all of these albums are in my view right now. And remember, the pictures that are in here are not necessarily in your photos library okay these are shared now this photo here in sample i'm going to just look at this picture i actually added this picture to my library already the unfortunate thing is is you can't tell if you've added it or not so you kind of got to keep that straight i like to save pictures immediately when someone shares them with me all right, so that's shared albums. Here, this section in the navigation pane is albums, and there are media types. So I'm gonna expand that view and see all of the different media types. These are Apple-generated albums. And you can see videos, selfies, and live photos, portrait photos, etc. And sometimes that's helpful if you're looking for a particular picture that you know is a selfie or um, that you used in one of those other modes. Like my kids love to do the slow-mo um, pictures and videos. So not terribly useful, but fun. The biggest area to look at is my albums. And what I have here is pictures that are um, in albums or folders. So we have 12 albums and five folders right at the top there, okay? Now, an album holds pictures and albums are the big squares here, okay? Albums are the big squares. Folders only hold albums and they're represented by the big square with the four small squares. So this folder named 1980s and 1990s is holding four albums. Let's go down to my folder named historical photos. You can see in my historical photos that I have three albums and one folder. Now, if you want to make a new folder, you're gonna be looking for the plus sign in the left navigation panel. And you can see I'm in historical photos and I have a plus sign here. I simply click on it 
and I can choose album, smart album or folder. And I'll just create a folder to start with and it's looking for me to name it on the left hand side there. So I'm just put demo folder. Okay. If I wanted to add albums to this folder, I would simply click on the plus sign next to it in the left bar there. All right, so let's go back up to historical photos. Now you can see my demo folder is there. And I sometimes like to just organize so I can select and I'm just using the command key to select three albums and I can drag them into my demo folder. So now I have two folders in here. Now, now, I really don't want those albums to be in there, so I can click Undo. Undo works in a lot of situations in Photos, just so that you know. And I'm gonna click Undo. Actually, I'll do one better to show you. I'm in the demo folder and I'm gonna select the three of them again, and then I'm gonna control click. When you control click your mouse pad, so you hold the control key down, you click your mouse pad, you get options. And I'm going to move these three albums back into historical photos, okay? The other thing that you can do, and this applies to pictures as well as albums, is you can select them and drag them to other places in that navigation bar. So I don't want to do that, so I'm going to put them back, and I'm going to cancel that. We are not wanting to merge them. I consider that an advanced technique. Okay, so hopefully you understand folders and albums. This is huge in organizing your pictures. I'd like to point out one uh, album that I called the not in an album. Now, this is important and I'll tell you why. We're gonna go back to my albums view. At Pixology, we teach that people should save their pictures in albums. And when you have photos not in an album, it's you might lose track of them, okay? So the structure I have here, this top row, is kind of my current, my current pictures that I'm working with. And then I go into 1980s and 90s, and it's chronological for the most part after that. So I have um, a birthday collage, which is a little bit of a separate project. And then I have the folders for the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and then the 2000s. Now. <laughs> the 1980s and 1990s really belong in between the 60s, 70s, and 2000s. So I simply dragged it in between and that rearranged my folders to make more sense. Do you see down on the left side now? 50s, 60s, 70s, 1980s, and 90s, and 2000s are organized in date order because I used the year first. Okay. That is organization by you know date. It's what we teach as being the most useful in our classes. So here we are in the not in album view, okay? So I'm going to control click on not in an album and show you how I did this, all right? The name is not in an album and it matches the following condition. Photos are not in any album. So remember that album is not any. Okay, I could add other conditions like keyword dog or uh, person is and choose a name. There's all sorts of things. And then the Photos app will put the pictures in there that meet those conditions. It's treating your photos like a big database. So let's cancel that because I'm happy with the way that works. Now, I'd like to just go to this folder here, 1981 to 2015 B-Day Collage. I keep this album because I did it for a, a birthday party a few years back and, and I, it just means something special to me. So I'm noticing in the album, I have pictures from 2006 to October 2015. Well. 
obviously this picture here, that's my dad when he was about two years old, is not from 2006. So I'm gonna go up to image in the menu bar and click adjust date and time. And I'm gonna call this one August because it looks like a summer photo. I'm gonna put 1949 when I think he was about two years old. And I'll adjust it. And in a second, we'll see right up here, now I have a photo that is dated August 1949. This is my daughter when she was a year old. So go to image and then we click adjust date and time. And this is gonna be, yeah, probably July, but not 2006, this was 2002. And I'm gonna click adjust. So now this is very cool. I have these two pictures that have the right date. The next thing that is handy to know when working with a group of pictures is that you can open a information screen. And to do that, I'm gonna select these three photos and do Command I. That is the get info quick keys to get a little screen here. And now I know I have pictures that were a wedding at Lambeau Field. There's a description line. I have tags, my family as weddings and other family. Well, that's not terribly helpful, but it's the tag that's in there. I could add a title if I want, and I can see they were all on September 11th, 2010. If I wanted to, let's go to, um, here. here's another photo. Let's hit Command I, and that's the Get Info. When I only select one picture, I get a lot more details. And do you see the name of this picture? This is terrible. This is because the photo was downloaded from Facebook and I can see it's 60 kilobytes, which is a very small photo, but it may be the only copy I have of these three people at a breakfast we were at, my, my aunts and cousin. I can add the keywords, um, breakfast. We always we go to breakfast. In fact, you can see that I have a keyword already, breakfast with dad. So I'm gonna enter that. And the three people have been already recognized by photos, so that's kind of cool. And I could add a description. Uh, I, I won't here, but you could. So that get info, command I, is really useful for adding keywords, descriptions, and getting a little bit of information about your photo. Okay, let's see. Last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to my all photos and I'm gonna just show you a little bit about organizing. Each month we say organize your pictures because the months fly by and soon you have thousands. So let's type in uh, May 2020. This search bar is awesome. Like, let me just back it up and type in dog. It will look up dog pictures. That's how much um, the Apple's Photos app can really look for pictures. Down to a poodle dog. Do we think that works? Well, it's the Cocker Spaniel. It's pretty close. I'm pretty amazed that it does it at all. All right, back to May 2020. So I haven't done a lot with these photos, but I'm going to put see all. And I know I have 374 pictures that need to be put into albums. Now, I have on the left-hand column, these were albums I made to help divvy up these pictures. So WSO photos, 2020 May work photos, and then family photos. And um, I'll just show you like this is all family. When I hold the shift key down, I select the first one and the last one that I want and it selects everything in between. So once I do that, I know these are family photos, I can drop them in the family photos. And then I'll go on to the next ones. Here's some more family photos and I'm going to drag them into the 2020 family photos. And I can continue to do that. Now, if we looked at the not in album, this would be such an easy way to look at what you need to organize. 
I have to confess, you see I have 5300 that are not in an album. I don't use photos for my family pictures. And the reason why is because there's a lot of moving parts in it. I think it's hard a little bit to maintain it. And I use forever for the pictures that I want to save. And so I don't really spend a lot of time in the Photos app. One other thing about albums, if you migrated your iPhoto library into the Photos app, you most likely have a lot of event albums. iPhoto used events, and when the library was merged into the Photos app, those events all became individual albums. Like some of my clients had hundreds of albums that really didn't make good sense. That's a big area to clean up. And if you do want to delete a, a folder or an album, you can simply, and I'm going to this demo folder, control click and delete folder or the album. Those event albums that came from iPhoto, you can delete the albums and the pictures will still be in your library. I go to the not in album to organize pictures. Now, here we have a purse picture that was an accent, so I'm gonna delete that picture. And then I know these, these four or five videos were from the Senior Olympics, which I have the WSO photos here. I'm gonna drop it in there. Now they're not in my not in album album. Okay, and I have work photos and I just am selecting those and I'll move them to May work photos. Okay, here's more family photos. And these were just other videos. We don't need to save those in the family photos and I'm dragging them to the family photos. So I hope you can see that this not in album could help you figure out what you have to organize yet. I'm saying the word album a lot and it's kind of driving me nuts. But the not in album is really a useful smart album to, to use. All right, we've talked about making folders and albums. We've looked at the navigation bar on the left hand side in pretty good detail. We've also talked about adding keywords and changing dates. We've looked at the search feature and we talked about how to organize pictures that aren't in an album yet. So I hope this was helpful and it is a broad overview. There's so much more that we could dive into. If you have questions that I didn't answer, leave them in the comments below or send me an email at mollyb at pixologyinc.com. And if worse comes to worse, we do digital photo organization for people and take it off your hands and, and put it into shape for you. So we'd be happy to be your resource. If you thought this was helpful, definitely subscribe. We're uploading videos often because we know people need help with their computers and programs to manage their memories. That's it for now. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day.